When I think of the most epic and neck-to-neck -neck battles this series could bring, I definitely don't picture this. But here we are anyway! Without wasting any time, I'm sure you're all dying to see what's in these duelist decks. So let's start with the charismatic convict himself, Tenzin Yanagi! Tenzin runs a hidden treasure deck, a deck that plays the Crystal Skull, Cabrera Skull, and Ashoka Pillar cards. These low-level monsters all have zero attack and have effects that do copious amounts of damage to punish the person who plays them in the first place. His goal is to get all three monsters onto the field and draw the Triangle O spell card to reflect all their effect damage to the opponent while simultaneously wiping their field. The rest of his deck either has means of stalling out the duel, dealing damage to the player, or taking gargantuan risks. Most of the defense is done with the rock monsters since his hidden treasures are all rock. But Totem Pole is a continuous trap that can negate three attacks. The side deck turbos his strategy and also runs Exod, Master of the Guard, to potentially turn this all or nothing gamble of a deck into an old school rock burn strategy. May the odds be ever in his favor, because his opponent has something seriously wicked in store. The time-space criminal himself, Paradox of Iliaster, runs a malefic deck. An army of corrupted versions of the most powerful dragons he could steal across dueling history. They have several restrictions, such as only being able to control one malefic at a time, needing to banish the original dragon from your deck, and needing the Malefic World Field spell to be in play for them to even exist. But the trade-off is a deck that never needs its normal summon, can synchro from the hand, and a multitude of three to four thousand attack monstrosities. The side deck offers not just searchability to dig for his field spell, but the skill train and montage dragon cards to capitalize on the Malefics both on the field and in the hand. Time to find out which of these absolute menaces will make their way towards the top. Ready, set, duel! We finally get to see what might be the most exciting matchup in this entire tournament. Paradox is going to be taking the first move, and much to my surprise, he sets a single card face down before ending his turn. To see to start Tenzin Yanagi's turn, he's gonna pay 3,000 life points to special summon the Ascended of Thunder, a monster with 2,700, and if it gets destroyed by the opponent, Tenzin will gain 5,000 life points, but for now he has to sit with almost half of the life that he started at just to get this monster on the field to begin with. He will follow it up with PD Rise Map, I believe is how you pronounce it. This will add any monster with zero attack from his deck to his hand, but if it gets summoned, he halves his life points this turn. He will then go ahead and half his life points to normal summon the Crystal Skull with zero attack. And on summon, the Crystal Skull will deal 1,000 points of damage to Tenzin and change itself to defense mode, but he'll chain with the quick play spell from his hand, Curse Reflection Doll, which will reflect the 1,000 points of damage to Paradox. Oh my lord. When he's moving straight into the battle phase, what a way to announce yourself to the rest of the bracket. Uh, what's this effect going on here? I'm already losing track. The Crystal Skull says if you did not take any effect damage this turn, you can either add to your hand or special summon a rock monster with zero attack from your deck. He will special summon... <laughs> he special summoned the Cabrera Stone from his deck in defense mode, but Cabrera Stone says that if it's summoned in defense mode, it destroys itself and then he takes 2,000 points of damage. However, he activated the Curse Reflection Doll earlier in this duel, so now he is left with only 500 life points. What is he doing over here? He does have a face down card, which he will activate because Paradox did nothing with his turn. Tenzin is using the Pharaoh's Treasure, which will shuffle itself back into his deck face up, and if he draws it out of the soon-to-be 35 cards in his deck, he can send it to the graveyard and add any card he wants from the grave to his hand. And the Crystal Skull will activate since he didn't take any damage this turn and summon the Ashoka Pillar. 
if the Ashoka Pillar gets destroyed, Tenzin will lose the duel because he will take 2,000 points of damage. What the hell is this thing? The Grave Oha. Grave Oha with 1,600 attack is being summoned, and each time a monster on his field gets flip summoned, he gets to deal 300 points of damage. He has no face down monsters. I have no idea if this is just going to be a body to beat down with, but here's another Piri Rice map to add to his hand. The Mahama the Fairy Dragon. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm at a loss for words with just the moves that he's making here. With the way that this whole duel is going, as a matter of fact, the Ascended Thunder will attack directly for 27, and that is exact game with the Grave Oha. <laughs> Tencent takes the first round. That first round was absolutely nothing like what I would have expected it to be like, and this is already a huge improvement for Paradox as he not only goes first again, but finally opens up with the Malefic World Field Spell. Uh, the reason he summoned nothing last duel is because without Malefic World, he cannot summon Malefic Monsters. In addition to this, instead of drawing a card at the start of each of his turns, he can reveal three Malefic cards, monster spells, or traps, and the opponent randomly picks one to be added to his hand as the draw, quote-unquote, for his turn. He'll normal summon the Malefic Parallel Gear, a tuner monster, before setting two cards and special summoning the Malefic Blue Eyes White Dragon by dumping the Blue Eyes White Dragon from his deck to the grave. Then he'll synchro into his boss monster, the Malefic Paradox Dragon, with 4,000 attack and defense. He's gonna end his turn, and let's see what Tenzin has in store. Thankfully for Tenzin, he does not run an extra deck, so there is no synchro monsters for the Malefic Paradox Dragon to take advantage of. He'll start off with the Piri Rice map in order to add another monster, and Paradox is gonna respond with the Metaverse to either add to his hand or activate, in this case, he'll add to his hand a field spell, and he grabs the Malefic World, and it looks like Piri Rice map is gonna add the Crystal Skull to his hand. I'm already excited to see this. We have the one-two punch just like the last duel. Tenzin's gonna go ahead and set a monster this time, but he'll special summon the Ascendant of Thunder in defense mode, leaving him with 5,000 life points before setting another card in the back row and passing turn. Malefic World will activate, and he gets the Malefic Paradigm Shift Trap card, which he will set before going into the battle phase, and the Paradox Dragon effortlessly destroyed the Ashoka Pillar. Now, I have no idea why Ashoka Pillar didn't go off. It says, if it gets destroyed, take 2,000 damage, and for some reason, Tenzin did not take any damage, and it is now his turn, so he got away with highway robbery on that one. He'll activate another Piri Rice map before normal summoning the Crystal Skull to deal himself 1,000 damage, except the Curse Reflect Doll will reflect it back at Paradox, so he takes the 1,000 instead. He'll end his turn here, and now Tenzin can use this Crystal Skull to get another monster. He will special summon the Cabrera Stone in attack mode this time, so it will not destroy itself, but he has two monsters that leave him wide open. While he stares down a 4,000 attack synchro, mind you, Malefic World will this time get the Malefic Rainbow Dragon, who can dump the OG Rainbow Dragon, so that Paradox now has a second frightening 4,000 attack body on the field, and the attack goes through! Tenzin took 4,000 damage, and the Crystal Skull has now been destroyed, except he activates from his hand the Mahama the Fairy Dragon Monster card. During your opponent's turn, when you take battle damage, you can special summon it, and then you can either gain the amount of life points you lost back, or you can inflict that same amount of damage back to the opponent. And Tenzin chooses to gain the life points, bringing himself back up to 5,000, knowing that he would be vulnerable from the incoming attack towards the Cabrera Stone. Very respectable play, and I did not expect it. However, he did take 2,000 damage from Cabrera Stone being destroyed. So, Paradox wins this duel. Round three between Tenzin Yanagi and Paradox. These have been very short, but incredible incredibly entertaining duels between these two players. Tenzin will start off with the Dark Room of Nightmare, a continuous spell card that will deal Paradox 300 points of damage every time another card does affect damage to him. 
then he'll activate the Magic Planter, which will sacrifice a continuous spell card on his field in order to draw two cards. Here is the famous Kiri Rice map in order to add to his hand the Crystal Skull, who will then summon itself and then combo off with the Curse Reflection Doll to start off the first turn, not only with half of his life points, but with direct damage to Paradox, who has no way of defending himself from it. He'll now activate the Roll of Fate spell card. He's going to roll a six-sided die, and he'll draw cards equal to the result, but after he draws them, he banishes the same number of cards off of the top of his deck. This will thin his deck incredibly and generate potentially enormous amounts of advantage for him, but the higher the number he rolls, the more likely he is to lose some of the best cards that he has available to him, a true double-edged sword. Roll of Fate will give Tenzin a three. So he draws three, and even though the card says banish, the program cheats for Tenzin yet again. The cards have been sent to the graveyard instead. So he does not permanently lose his cards. He did lose a Crystal Skull and a Rice Map, however. Holy, <laughs> this is one stack duel if I've ever seen it. He'll set two, activate a second Roll of Fate because it's not once per turn. And this time he rolls four. So he has thinned his deck by a grand total of 14. No, with the Rice Map, 15 cards on the first turn of the duel and he'll just casually set another card in the back row and end his turn there crystal skull will now special summon the ashoka pillar in attack mode even though it has 2200 defense he fears absolutely nothing mind you paradox can synchro summon here paradox can summon the malefic rainbow dragon here and one shot Tenzin, and he is not afraid, and for grateful reason, for correct reason, for whatever the word is, because Paradox will simply set a card face down and pass turn. Meanwhile, Crystal Skull gets the Cabrera Stone out of the deck, so he has the trio, the very dangerous trio that he has built his entire deck around trying to achieve. Crystal Skull will activate again, grabbing the Cabrera Stone for him before ending his turn there, doing nothing. For Paradox's turn, he actually gets to summon the Malefic Blue-Eyes White Dragon, and then it dies because he has no Malefic World, but he'll still go ahead and summon the Malefic Stardust Dragon anyways. So now he's down four of his monsters, and then he activates the Malefic Selector spell card, which can banish two Malefic monsters from the graveyard as the cost of activation, so it wasn't just random card playing. Malefic Selector will allow him to add two Malefic cards from his deck to his hand. Mind you, cards, not just monsters. So he'll banish those two, and in response, Tenzin will activate the Totem Pole Continuous Trap, so that up to three times he can negate one of Paradox's attacks. Selector is going to let him grab the Malefic Territory and the Malefic Cyber and Dragon for himself. The Malefic Territory activates, and on activation, it can play the Malefic World straight out of the deck. Also, neither player can target cards in the field zone with hard effects. In addition to that, Malefic Monsters have their effects negated during the battle phase. So, now he can go ahead and successfully summon the Malefic Cyber and Dragon that's in his hand and swing into battle against the Crystal Skull for game! But Totem Pole negates that attack! So Paradox has to just end his turn there. Two more uses out of the Totem Pole, and now on the start of his next turn, Tenzin activates Triangle O. This can only be activated when Tenzin controls face up on his field a Crystal Skull, an Ashoka Pillar, and a Cabrera Stone. It destroys every monster spell and trap on the field. And also, any effect damage he takes for the rest of this turn gets reflected back at his opponent. So, we'll see all of the monsters, spells, and traps leave the field. Cabrera Stone and Ashoka Pillar would do 2,000 points of damage to Yanagi, in addition to the second Cabrera Stone for a grand total of 6,000 damage but it gets bounced back to Paradox, who will respond with the trap card from his graveyard, the Malefic Toon. Since a Malefic monster on his field was destroyed while Malefic Toon was in the graveyard, he can banish it to add any Malefic monster to his hand that he pleases straight from the deck, and he grabs the Malefic Paradox gear. But that doesn't stop the 6,000 points of damage he takes! 
Paradox is now in a life point deficiency compared to Tenzin, who got off his ultimate combo. Tenzin will normal summon the Golem Sentry with its 800 attack and then activate Ties of the Brethren for 1,000 life points, who can special summon up to two level four lower monsters with the same type, rock type, as the Golem Sentry from his hand or his deck. But these other monsters are not allowed to attack or be tributed. But he does get extra body, so he'll go ahead and summon the Maui Interceptor Cannons and the Grave Oha that we saw before. With his 800 attack, Golem Sentry will bring Paradox down to only 200 life points left. And then Golem Sentry will set himself face down with his own effect, as will Maui Interceptor Cannons. And he'll end his turn there. Paradox has only this turn to survive, and he hard draws. He top decks the Malefic World. So he'll normal summon the Malefic Paradox Gear, who can sacrifice itself to summon its tuner from the deck the Malefic Parallel Gear, as well as search for a Malefic Monster, which he grabs the Malefic Stardust Dragon. Malefic Stardust Dragon will summon itself and be tuned by the Parallel Gear for the Malefic Paradox Dragon. He'll activate the quick play spell Malefic Divide, targeting a Malefic in the graveyard and summoning it, ignoring its summoning conditions. But during the end phase of this turn, that revived monster gets removed from the game and he brings out Malefic Cyber End Dragon, who can do piercing damage with 4,000 attack points. He swings into the Golem Sentry, doing 2,200 damage, but Tenzin activates Mahama, the Fairy Dragon, from his hand, summoning itself and bouncing back 2,200 damage to Paradox. Tenzin wins the duel.